Are you checking into your math curriculum options for elementary school, specifically third grade? Are you curious about what Saxon may look like? Well, let's take a peek inside. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, a christ following wife and a homeschool mom to three boys. Here we talk all things homeschool and we will learn together how to use our roles as wife, mom, teacher, and homemaker in order to glorify God. Okay, this is my second go around with Saxon math three. So I have done kindergarten first, second, and third now two times. Uh, we're wrapping up this second time. So both my sons have used Saxon ever since kindergarten. My oldest son is now finishing up math six five, which is advanced fifth grade slash sixth grade level. And obviously since we've been using it for this long, we do like it. Um, it is not the most popular math curriculum by any means. Um, there are a few cons to it, but for us, the pros well outweigh the cons. And so I would love to just take you through, kind of see what a lesson looks like, see kind of what the table of contents looks like, um, so you can know what kind of things you can expect to learn in third grade. Um, I'll show you what the tests and everything look like. So let's turn this around and get started. Okay, so here is the book itself. Now these books are super fat. K through three are really, really big, but it is the text, the teacher's guide, the solution manual, all in one. So here is the study overview. Here are a table of contents. So the very first lesson, telling time to the hour, graphing, reading a graph, ordering numbers to 100. So again, they always start with a big fat review. Um, by this time, my son was well past learning all of this stuff, but it was just a good refresher for him. So some people choose to skip those for several lessons. Some people um, kind of just go through them quickly or some people just embrace the review. So we have tallying, we have horizontal, vertical, oblique line segments, multiples of 100, maps, following a recipe, square numbers. adding money amounts, multiplying by three and six. So they are working on a lot of multiplication in third grade, subtracting two and three digit numbers, finding missing, missing add-ins or sums of a hundred, identifying parallel lines, perpendicular lines. And then toward the end of the year, they're working on adding positive and negative numbers, ordering unit fractions, simplifying an equation containing parentheses and creating a coordinate plane and graphing points on a coordinate plane. And here's your list of materials for each lesson. Now this tells you not just, you know, you'll need crayons or you'll need manipulatives. There's not as many manipula manipulatives that you'll use in third grade, um, but they do still come up those um, tiles and the shapes and everything like that. But they also tell you what worksheets and fact sheets and um, fact cards you will need. I didn't bring the fact cards with me, but they're just little tear out cards. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, all of that. Now these are the meeting strips that you can make copies of. We actually do not use this anymore. We did a long time ago, but we just kind of stopped doing it because he had this down. But if you want to, you can make copies and cut them out. It's today's date, the number of the day, the pattern of the day, the clock, coin cups, problem of the day, stuff like that. We just choose to forego that because it was just kind of extra work on me to do that and he understood it all already. So there's first lesson but I will kind of go to a lesson in the middle of the year so that gives you a better idea. So here's lesson 65. So there are 140 lessons. This isn't quite halfway but close enough. So identifying the missing add-in in a sum some more story and so this part in the dark is always you know kind of what you as a teacher might want to prep the day before and so it tells you what materials you need so this is an assessment week because it ends at a five so every five lessons there is an assessment every one that ends in a zero so every tenth lesson it's not only a written assessment but a verbal assessment and i'll show you that in a minute you'll need scrap paper and a fact sheet which i'll show you those two um, so here is the pattern that you will put on that meeting strip that I just showed you and then they will finish it out and tell you what rule and then here's the answer for you and the rule is plus two Then you have those little demonstration clocks you set it at 120 and then they fill out the time on that um, strip that I showed you 
and then you write the problem of the day down and then they solve it on that strip that I showed you and then there's the answer. And then here's what you put in the coin cup and then they also write all of that on the strip. Now, if I only had one student, I may take the time to still do this, but since he had it under control, I don't take that time anymore. The meeting, again, you can do calendar or not do it if your kid understands it, pass it, <laughs> that's what I do anyway. Again, the number of the day, temperature, today's count, today's pattern, today's clock, problem of the day, coin cup. We skip all that, to be honest. Um, we did it all through second grade, but by now he understands all that and I just, I don't know, we talk about this stuff kind of throughout our day anyway, but if you wanna go over it, it's there and it's available. And like I said, since this ends in a five, there is an assessment to this week. And so you will just give them assessment number 12. They don't call them tests at this age because you just wanna say, hey, we're checking on what we remember. You're not actually testing them. And then tells you exactly what to do. What I love is that it is all scripted. So if you're at all unsure, it tells you literally exactly what to say. Then this is the actual lesson where you learn the new concept. Again, it is totally scripted out for you. And then gives you your example problems that you can write on the board. And then it tells you literally everything to do. Then we go on to class practice. So this is when you use your fact cards, little cards to practice your addition or subtraction or whatever you're working on. It tells you which cards to use and then you give them the matching fact sheet and it's timed and it tells you how long to time it. Sometimes it's different. Um, then after that you have your worksheet. It says complete side A and then later have them do side B. So what I do instead of working with them on side A and then giving him side B later, I go ahead and just give him side A. Let me just show you what that looks like. This isn't for the same lesson, but so he would just do side A but then if you notice on side B, it kind of mirrors side A. It's not the same questions, but it's the same type of questions. So like with number four, write a number sentence for this picture. Number four on this side, write a number sentence for this picture, but the picture is different. So when he does side A, I don't help him at all. But if there's something he misses, then I make him do the one that corresponds to it on the back. So if he missed number four on the front, then I explain to him what he did wrong, we go over it, and then he has to show me that he understands by doing it on the back. But if you wanted to do both sides, you absolutely could. And then here at the end of the lesson is your teacher's key. And so here is the assessment front and back, so you can grade that. Here's the worksheet, side A and side B, so you can grade that. And then it moves on to the next lesson. Here's what you can expect for a time test. Like I said, the time varies on how long, sometimes it's four minutes, sometimes it's one minute, depending on what kind of test it is. Sometimes they're big, long ones like this, but these are simpler problems too. Um, and those usually have a longer time limit. And then also end with your assessments and worksheets and whatever, you might occasionally come across a master. And this is just something that they might need for the lesson. So for this one, we're talking about parallel line segments. So here's just all these shapes and he'll go through and find all the parallel lines in there. Um, but this is all in one booklet and they do have perforated edges, but I usually go and have the bindings cut off to make them loose leaf so that we can file them in our file crate system just to organize them better. But if you wanted to keep them um, in a booklet, you definitely could. Okay, so this one I moved over to lesson 120 has the written and then the oral assessment. And I forgot to bring that paper up here, but I'll show you kind of what it looks like. This is just zoomed in from the lesson, but like this says, how many tiles do you need to make a three by five array? which is working on multiplication basically. And then here's another question you just record their answers. Um, this is just the copy, but in the actual recording form. Okay, so you saw that there was 140 lessons there. So that includes your assessments and everything. So unlike math um, five, four and six, five and on up um, where they have the tests and everything separate, those are just included in your lesson. So it is just a flat 140 lessons. You can divide that up however you wanted to do that. Um, we just do math four days a week and so we get done, you know, at a fairly decent time even doing that. The pros and cons, Saxon can look very intimidating. Like you pick up this big fat book and you're like, what the heck? Um, but the pros of Saxon are, there's no holes. It is intense and it is, you know, kind of a lot and in your face, but there's no holes in it. There's, you know, we are going over telling time or going over geometry type stuff. We're going over patterns. We're going over, you know, it's not just your basic, 
math. It's all the things that you could want in math, at least from what I can tell. Um, some other programs out there I've seen um, that just, I'm like, oh wait, we're already learning about multiplication, but this kid doesn't know how to tell time. That's just my experience. I don't have a ton of experience in other curriculums because like I said, we've used, it, used this the whole time, but I have looked at other ones. I also love that, especially for this third grade on down, it is very hands-on. So there are a lot of manipulatives that you use. Um, there's usually always a tactile way to learn whatever it is you're learning. And there's a lot of like, let's play store. Let's pretend that you are this and I'm doing this. And, you know, let's pretend that I have five cookies and you have four, you know, whatever. It's just very hands-on and very real life like application. And I still love the spiral approach of Saxon. If you watched my 6-5 video, I talked about that, how it's not just master this and move on, master this and move on to where you get way down the road and you're like, oh wait, I don't remember how to do blah, blah, blah. But you hit it for a little while and then you move on to something else, but then you come back around and hit it and then move on to something else, you come back around. So you're constantly doing those old things that you learned in the beginning of the year too, so that you don't grow rusty in those skills, but you just build on them to get better at them. But my cons would be that it is intense. It does take a lot of time. If you do it fully and completely, like you do that morning meeting and the strip thing that I was telling you about and every single problem front and back on the worksheets. If you do all of that, it's going to take you quite a bit of time. If you just want that intense math, I say go for it. If that is not for you, that shouldn't be a reason to steer away from it. Um, because like I said, I adapt it to where it does not take nearly as much time as it would if I did it full out. And I still feel like my kids are getting quality math education. So it is kind of intense. It is kind of long. And as you saw, it is not showy. It's not fluffy. It's not pretty. <laughs> it's black and white, but with math, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with no frills. I'm okay with it just being numbers on a page. Um, there are the occasional pictures, but because we do have that hands-on component, I think that kind of takes place of all of the frills. And really, I think it's less distracting. I think they're able to focus better um, with just the numbers on the page. So needless to say, we are fans of Saxon. Um, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I hope this helps you kind of see what a real lesson looks like and what to expect if you were to try this. Coming up this next week, I have a video on just kind of the nuts and bolts and behind the scenes work of homeschooling and also a biblical womanhood video on patience. That's an exciting one. <laughs> and let me know down below, what is your favorite um, math curriculum for third grade or just kind of that elementary age in general? I thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.